Blau und weiß sein Leben lang. Hallo meine Leute. Willkommen zum einzigen Schalke Podcast auf Englisch. That's right, folks. Officially the world's only English Schalke Podcast. Welcome to Season 5, Episode 129 of Schalke America. I'm your host, Richard Carmen. Joining me in the Zweite Liga, as always, our co-host, Jack Mangan. Jack, how are we doing, man? As you said, live from Bumi 2. Uh, officially yeah. and finally, long-awaited. Uh, and, and we're finally here. After an are- extended, uh, extended <laughs> summer holiday, shall we say. It is a, an extended summer holiday. It's a summer holiday where we actually finally met pers- uh, face-to-face, so... Uh, after five seasons or whatever, after four seasons, we finally did it. So yeah, we met up in Chicago. I met in your your hometown, huh? Yeah, no, yeah. The fi- the long streak of us doing this remotely <laughs> and have never I mean, always attending watch parties at different times and never actually getting in the same city at the same time. We finally uh, we weren't yeah, sure we existed in the same universe sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You were doing a little midwestern uh, summer tour, so uh, yeah, we were able to meet up briefly in Chicago. So it was uh, obviously great to finally meet you, bud. And uh, yeah, yeah. Here we. <laughs> Here we are. Like I said, extended summer holiday, uh, and uh, multiple reasons for that. But uh, you yeah. know, looking forward to getting back into it. Yeah, yeah. Jake's in the house. Good to see you again, Jake. He says, "Nice to see you both again." At it. Thank you, sir. We're glad to have you back as well. Uh, yeah, you know, typically, typically when the uh, Bundesliga starts up this time of year, this is when we kind of get back in, in, our, in our horses. But then, you know, I'm getting ready to go on vacation, and I found out Schalke starts the, the day I leave for vacation. I'm like, okay, well. This isn't gonna happen. <laughs> so you know, it took it took a couple of weeks, but uh, yeah, we're back in it, and uh, yeah, lots of stuff to talk about uh, in this one. We had uh, backroom moves, we had player moves, we had uh, obviously a new league we're playing in now, and uh, so so much to get into, Jack. Um, let's just start off with the the backroom stuff that moved off because there's a lot of things that went on. Uh, first, we got a new sporting director. Roven Schroeder, uh, he came in uh, this summer, probably I think just before the uh, the summer, just I think right at the end of the last season. Um, and you know, many there were many doubts about what what he could do, but I think, and this is just my opinion alone, I think he's done very well for what he's had to work with. Um, some of the names he's brought in that we'll get to here in a second, some of the dead weight that we lost as well. I think he's done pretty good considering what he had to work with. What are you, what are your thoughts on what he's done so far? Obviously, it's a limited sample that we've seen, but um, yeah, some wheeling and dealing by him. Well, he's managed to get rid of Sebastian Rudy, so he starts off with an A plus in my book. Um, <laughs> also, I don't know if this was going around social media. I don't know if you saw the uh, the Schalke support with the jersey he had, uh, yeah. number sixteen on the back, and then the, the name was Mio for Rudy, which was great. Yeah, um, I really enjoyed that. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I mean, I, I think given for the most part uh, what we have to work with um, from a financial standpoint, yeah. I've been relatively pleased with, with with the moves we've made in the summer obviously also once you start talking about some of the guys we're targeting uh now also with that new financial picture uh, my knowledge of those transfer targets is not going to be as great because it's going to have a different selection of players to some extent um uh yeah but i think i think most of the moves i, I i've like i mean where do you want to start on these do you want to start with the, you know the outgoing players i mean where, where, where do you want to go well, yeah. Well, before we get to the players, let's let, sure, let's yeah. talk also some of the supervisory board that also changed as well. Um, a lot of moves there, but the main ones we want to talk about just real briefly. Uh, Axel Heffer was voted the new chairman by the supervisory board. This happened on July seventeenth. There's actually an earlier uh, um, uh, session that they had that they had technical difficulties, and so it got postponed to seven seventeen. And then, uh, yeah, he was voted uh, the new chairman, and then uh, Marit Donneman was appointed uh, vice chair. So. Um, some changes there in the, in the supervisory board there, Jack. Uh, nothing really that I got any comments on that. I don't know if you have as well. Also, uh, in terms of uh, big moves on from the Shaka Twitter perspective, uh, wasn't it uh, Torsten Velen on the election committee? That, yeah, I yeah. thought I thought I saw that too. I wasn't sure, and I was like, I was going to comment, but then you said, I'm like, okay, maybe it did happen. So yeah, at least in terms of our sort of general online universe, that was another backroom move, if you will. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. To, to, to mention, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so, I mean, a lot of moves going on here and there. Uh, but obviously, uh, of the all the, moves, all the moves that happened in the back room, I think the the most notable one for us was Rovin Schroeder coming in, and I think he's done uh, a competent job so far, and it, it seems to be an upgrade from what we've had recently. But um, yeah, lots of moves to talk about. Let's first talk about the moves. Yeah, the, one thing say, the, the last, the final word I'll say real quick on that is just, and this is kind of a generic, subjective take, but like I, I feel like we have a little bit more of an edge in our negotiations. 
Um, you think? Yeah, w- with him. And so oh, I, okay. I, I, feel, I feel like we're, we're generally getting taken advantage of pretty yes. consistently in yes. a lot of our dealings. I agree. And there were some moves in the offseason that just turned out from like a financial picture better than I thought they would. Um, and, and so for that, I was like, great. Like finally somebody who's just going to come in and like be very no nonsense about it. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and get things done. So, uh, you know, early days, we'll see how it goes. But um, yeah, decent, decent first returns, I'd say. There's one move on uh, in terms of players that came in that there was a lot of question about the salary, but we'll get to him when we talk about the transfers in. Uh, but well, let's go ahead and talk about some of the transfer out. Um, got some money for some players and then got, over, got rid of a lot of dead weight here. Uh, Weston McKinney, we officially sold him $22.5 million. Uh, Swat Sager got sold to Hertha $8.8 8, uh, million. Rahman sold to Anderlecht $3.3 million. Tech Petty is gone. The Free Katucci movement is gone. Moved to Turkey. We lost Karls, Uth, Stambouli, Skripski, Schopf, Rudy, Schubert, Benteleb. Talking about dead weight. Bentaleb uh, gone to Genoa. That was broke. Was a broke yesterday that I saw. Uh, and then we got a bunch of guys who loaned out. We had Matando, Mendil, and uh, one other one other player. I forget who it is. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, Buyalab. Buyalab is the other one. Um, oh, and also today, Levan Mercant was uh, yes. loaned out as well. So uh, lots of lots of player movement in terms of exiting Schalke. Thoughts on the on some of the moves that made that happened this uh, this off season. As far as the Bentelev thing goes, part of me is still expecting there to randomly be an article like in the winter about like him somehow being at the club still and being <laughs> like, oh, like I just don't fully believe that he's like gone yet. Until he's holding up that um, jersey, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I mean a lot of I mean I think that that Juventus from McKinney, that's still being paid in installments, right? I don't think we received that entire. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, but, yeah. yeah. But uh, it, it, I mean Suat Serdar. Um, he was always one of the guys that I thought was more likely to leave, right? Like, so, like, the McKennies, the Harits, you know, uh, the Kabaks, the Wobble, Kabaks still, that picture's interesting at the moment. But, um, yeah, Seward Sarah, I think I think the $8 million is probably less than we would have expected or wanted him to be sold for. Um, I guess if you're kind of projecting, when we, when we initially signed him, the expectation we had for him, like, from a development standpoint, yeah, I, I feel like we once he moved down, we would have expected to probably get more than that from him but honestly i think that's a pretty pretty fair price given what he ultimately produced um and especially like you know like it's hard to put anyone on display last season given how bad the team was in general so um yeah a guy that i felt like obviously showed things at times but kind of underperformed in in a number of ways pretty consistently for us and i was i was fine with you know the eight million we got for him um benito roman obviously taking a pretty what what did we buy him for 14 yeah, 14, like 15, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's yeah. obviously taking a pretty big hit on that. Um, but, you know, at least getting a few million back from him, which was honestly kind of more than I expected to some extent. I don't know if I was way off on my expectations for that one. But, um, yeah, another guy who just uh, – I mean, I think at the time we were all kind of like 14 million for that is, is a little optimistic. And it was kind of Schalke's habit of picking people up from lower division sides. Like after they had like yep. a single, you know, standout season or something and, and it not really panning out. But – Oh uh, yeah, Tech Petty, um, long rumored to be like uh, you know potentially coming back and contributing to the side, and then ultimately he goes out this time permanently. So that that kind of saga is over finally. And yeah, and then the big one um, from the Shalk America perspective, of course, <laughs> on the fourth of July, no less. Which I feel like in my heart of hearts was intentional in some way, either as a direct dig to this podcast. Or, like, hey, maybe they'll be distracted with 4th of July festivities and they won't notice this and cause a scene on Twitter. Yeah, uh, yeah but the free constitution movement, uh, you know, officially dead and buried um, on the 4th of July, which was just Fitting. incredibly, uh, incredibly <laughs> poetic. But uh, we're all uh, Bashakta here fans now, I think. So. Yeah, uh, I think so. The, the second Katuchu scores, uh, you know, a, a Super League goal, um, you will be hearing from it on a segment called Katuchu Watch. Yeah. Um, not the not the Super League, but the Super League. Yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll keep you uh, we'll keep you posted on all of his exploits. Uh, no need to worry. Um, the rest, of, I mean, the rest of the moves just quickly. Um, Marco going to Cologne. I, I'm happy for him for that move. It, it, yeah. That it ends up being a good move for him. Um, you know, didn't really work out here, but I, a guy that I generally feel fairly positively about as as, as a you know whatever. Yeah. Um, Carl's Junior. Sad day too. That's that yeah. podcast favorite. He's on the way out. Yeah. Stan Bully, I mean, for the best. Uh, you know, a guy who I do feel like cared about the club and, and obviously was important at, 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 in various campaigns, but um, was really not up for it. You know, the last couple of years in terms of level he was bringing for us, and so I think that move was probably um, coming for a while. 
and then as, as I mentioned before, uh, Sebastian Brady getting off the books is good. Um, Shop was a longtime servant, um, so him, him him departing as well. Um, but you know, hopefully, I mean, I don't know. I always feel like he's somebody's kind of getting picked from his national team, and is rarely around our squad enough to really like deserve that from like a club level. But you know, maybe he'll maybe he'll go elsewhere and um, yeah. succeed and kind of demonstrate why he gets selected as much as he does. And um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, interesting that like there's no place in the squad for Matondo, right? Um, yeah. After the money we paid for him, and, and uh, yeah, you know, Mercan and Bujaleb as well, both leaving um, the Mercan news that you mentioned broke today. That was interesting too because you know some of those guys that were kind of coming up from the Napoli for me the last couple seasons that we figured, hey, maybe these are some of the guys who are going to have finally their chance to have a bigger role. In the big. We got rid of them real quick, which was interesting. So I, I don't know. I just I didn't expect that for some reason. But. I would not be surprised if Boz Duan is next. I honestly wouldn't. Just the way it's been panning out with the, with the guys. I, I mean. You haven't seen much of him this season so far, and so, yeah. Yeah, it sounds like they've been kind of critical of him at times, which is interesting. Um, but, yeah, like a lot of those guys that I thought might finally get their, their chance to get minutes or were immediately kind of shuffled out the door, so that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, Jake's asking, any news or rumors on Kabak or Harit uh, tra- and the transfer in the works? So I know that Harit, I heard that was uh, there's a, a Turkish club, that, I think it was a Turkish club that's uh, interested in him, and then Kabak, I heard there was an English club, and I can't remember for the life of me who, who it was. I don't think it was... Might have been West Ham, but I can't recall exactly who it was. But there's some rumors for both those players. Nothing official just yet. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, there's been a lot more talk about Ozan Kabak over the summer, and everything, just because like the Liverpool ties and all that. But like, I felt that the Harit one was was surprisingly, yeah, um, silent. There wasn't a lot of direct links anywhere. Um, which there I don't was know. brief brief glimmer with uh, I don't know if it was Sassuolo or Atalanta with Harit, which could have been an interesting move. But um, yeah, no, it's been quiet with him, like you said. We'll see if he ends up somewhere. Obviously, he's an interesting case. Like, if you're if you're a sporting director and you're considering about investing any sort of significant money in him, because obviously he has had you know the disciplinary issues in the past, um, questions about his attitude at times, inconsistent. But for whatever reason, it's still a player that I, I very much expected to get swooped up for a decent fee relatively quickly. Because I feel like there just has to be a team out there that wants to take a gamble on what he brings to the table. Because I mean, like, yeah. Once again, at at his best, like, he legitimately, I think, can yeah. be a game changer in a in a top league, you know, for for yeah. at, at a minimum, you know, like a, a mid table side. I, I feel like at, when he's when he's playing consistently at his best, I think I do think he's that good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've, I've been surprised that it's been as quiet as it as it has been. Before I go into my takes on some of the transfer outs, uh, you know, you mentioned discipline, and you know. Uh, something that was lacking on our team in terms of discipline was when Christian Gross was here. Uh, and obviously the news broke, I don't know if it was today or yesterday, Benito Roman uh, speaking up about, I don't know if you saw this, Jack, like speaking yeah, up yeah. about his time at Schalke and how uh, all the veterans were really running the club. They just ignored what he said because he didn't know anybody's names and he didn't, you know, wasn't doing this and that. And so the veterans just, you know, they would sit, they would sit down together. They wouldn't do anything. It was very, uh, very interesting to hear from Rahman. Something we, I, we've, we, at least for me, I quite frankly thought we'd hear from Nabil Bentaleb uh, right now, not Rahman first, but uh, yeah, uh, Rahman speaking his, speaking his uh, mind. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, Christ- the Christian Gross thing doesn't surprise me. We've heard no. similar things already from that's been that's been like widely reported. Um, yeah. and, I mean, and I think we've also talked about that. That was kind of the moment where that hire, not not so much the decision to get rid of Manuel Baum, but like the the, the, the hire that you know of Christian Gross specifically coming in was when we were kind of like, what is going on with our yeah. decision making? And, and like yeah. and like because no one was like, oh, this is a good signing. Or, sorry, not even a signing. You know, a good hire. Hiring, um, yeah. Yeah, and that's just, it's, I mean, basically suggestions that, once again, there was basically no tactical instruction happening. He didn't know people's names. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it sounds mm-hmm. like an absolute joke of a, of a stretch. And, and uh, a period of, of the season where technically, you know, all was not lost yet. And that, that was kind of like a critical moment for us to try to get something turned around and potentially uh, wasted moments, too. Not saying that, you know, the end result would have been different because I think we were going that direction all season. But, yeah, it makes it even worse kind of in hindsight. And it was interesting because, uh, and I haven't checked this myself, but Roman says, you know, when when the when the team did its best under Gross, it's when actually the veterans just you know did whatever they wanted. Like he gave out tactical advice, and they're like, "Now nah, we're gonna do this instead," and they played better. But it still didn't matter, right? The uh, end result is fight the Liga. So uh, yeah, it was it's interesting to see his perspective. And yeah, he also, did he also mention that like he, uh, like another six months and he would have like quit football because like that's how like bad of a time he was having. Yeah, yeah. So Cedric uh, Cedric Zelmat had mentioned something. Had, had posted that quote there. So yeah, yeah. He definitely. Which to me, I'm like, like take your yeah. money and, and you know do yeah. your job, but like you know because yeah. you're getting pretty well compensated. But anyway. 
Uh, Doug Jackson's asking, uh, is the mass departures related to finances, overpaid players, and or right sizing for Svita Liga? Also, what's the plan for getting back to the top league? Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, I, would, <laughs> I, mean, I, would, I would agree. I would agree. It's it's, it's almost a little bit of everything. Finances and over, yeah, or in getting getting the wage bill to where it needs to be, yeah. um, and, and bringing in some additional money to to shore up our debts and also try to fund whatever moves we are trying to make. So, um, yeah, I mean, obviously there was that whole we, we had to we had to demonstrate like financial solvency to actually register and yep. get that license. So, I mean, that that was like a deadline that we were needing to hit and and get to certain for a while. That was kind of up in. I mean. The, from the messaging from the club is that they were pretty confident that that wasn't going to be a problem if they were going to make it happen. But like, you know, that was technically hanging over us for a decent part of the summer. Yeah. We were getting more and more worried as, as the time went on. We're like, Oh, is this going to happen or not? Uh, Doug's asking, is this just a complete ground up rebuild? Yes and no. I mean, we had to get rid of a lot of stuff, um, both with like Jack, like Jack said, financial reasons. And you know, other, other ones is just, we had to get rid of them. It was the, the culture that was happening in the background that it needed to change some things. And I don't think it's a complete rebuild because obviously the Kanap and Shimita players are there, um, that we're trying to build around. Um, surprisingly enough, you know, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Becker. We haven't seen much of Becker, even though he was so he played so well last year. I thought, you know, with Malik Tiao, we thought two of the better players last season. Um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a good overhaul. And you know, his early question about like what's the plan for getting back to the top league? It's get back as soon as possible because they know the longer you stretch this out, you're gonna turn into a Hamburg or a St. Pauli or a, or a Kaiserslautern, possibly even. You know, and you don't want to do that. Um, you want to get back as soon as possible. I think with some of the moves they brought in. Uh, show their intention because there's a mix of people who uh, have mass, massive experience in the Svaita Liga and other players who come from, from the Bundesliga clubs as well. So, uh, you know, it sounds like they want to get back as soon as possible. I think that's the right move because the longer you're down here, the long, the less money you're going to have and, you know, the more heartache you're going to give us. Uh, so I, I fully expect that's what the – I mean, would you disagree, Jack? No, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't call it like – a total rebuild in sort of like yeah. the american sports sense of the word yeah. like you know like the cubs back in the day you know whenever yeah. I, I wouldn't call it like that entirely but i think it's probably kind of like a half measure between um you know kind of continuing to roll and then rebuilding significantly and a lot of that was, as you said was just necessitated by um the financials and having to uh you know kind of recontort yourself into the shape where you can actually fit into the the spider bonus again function from a you know from a ver- various standpoints Thinking of, speaking of the Cubs, what if we had Theo Epstein? You think he'd be able to rebuild us? <laughs> I don't know, man. Shock is, a, shock is a tough case, man. What are you going to say? It is. It is. Um, so talk about some of the moves for me, transfers out. Uh, Schubert was interesting for me because, you know, while we all love Michel Langer, I thought, you know, Schubert has, is young, has still potential. Um, I thought for sure he was going to get a chance under, under Ralph Fairman. Um, but no, the club eventually, I think they, they sold him, I, th- I believe, and I forget to whom. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's gone, so... Uh, didn't really get a shake. A lot longer is the backup at the moment. Uh, he actually started the season because, uh, or started a game or two ago because uh, uh, Ral had uh, COVID-19. So or uh, it was under protocol or whatever it was, but he, he couldn't play because of that. Uh, some of the other moves that are out, obviously, the free Cotucci. Go ahead. Yeah, real quick. I just wanted to shout out Ralph Fairman because he restructured his contract. Um, for 2025, the, right? For, for the benefit of, of the team. So yeah. once again, just kind of cementing, I think, basically legend yeah. status at this point um, absolutely absolutely uh, maybe not in terms of like you know the highest highs of his like you know performances being like you know deserving of in that sense but yeah. you know he's coming to the club over the years and now sticking with us and doing that in second division is uh you know pretty great yeah no no i agree about that um so at Serdar, that move i mean that had to happen uh, like i'm surprised that harit hasn't happened yet uh, finally getting rid of bentaleb and, and rudy was i think key for us just for our for our, our sake and sanity um, but I, I'm with you in terms of the loan outs with uh, Buyalab and uh, and Merkan. It's just it's very head scratching to me. But I mean, I I get it. There's actually you watching the players on the pitch and they're playing very well. I think, um, but it's it's hard to fathom that, that they couldn't make an impact in this team, whether it's you know starting or on the bench some way somehow. Um, especially after what we saw, we saw so much of them. Especially Buyalab, I think of all of them had the most opportunities, um, and so he didn't, he doesn't get that in this fight to league now and. I know at least with the Mercan loan, they mentioned how um, I think it was uh, Roman Schroeder said that you know his the most important thing for him is pitch time, which I agree with all these players. It's it's pitch time. The, that's the way you're going to improve as a player. You're not going to sit on the bench and get better. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's sad to see some of these guys go, but uh, we did get a little bit of money for some of these players, um, and um, yeah, hopefully it's for the for the benefit uh, of of the club going in and. There were some moves that came in that we got to talk about because uh, there were so many moves, uh, it seems like. Um, 
I'll, I'll run through the names real quick, and then you just tell me which ones you think were the, be- the best fits. Uh, yeah. Myers Bulter from Union Berlin, uh, Reinhold Ranfeld from Lask, Simona Taroda from Hamburg, Victor Paulsen, Darmstadt, uh, Marcin Kaminski, Stuttgart, Dries Vouchers, Genk, Danny Latza, the new captain from Mainz, Dominic Drexel, Drexler, excuse me, I want to say Drexler, <laughs> from Köln, uh, Martin Frazel from Ado Den Haag, and Rodrigo Salazar from Eintracht. Uh, actually, there's a couple more, actually, too. Um, Thomas Wiegen from uh, Akmar. Marvin Perringer from Freiburg and Yaroslav Mikhailov, who scored uh, recently uh, from Zenit. Uh, so of all the big, all those names that we just mentioned, um, which ones have st- stood out for you thus far? Well, so some of them we've known for a while. I think even on like our podcast from last season, like Donny Latza. Donny uh, Latza, yeah. That move was announced pretty early. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people didn't like that from like, you know, kind of a squad building standpoint. But um, I mean, the obvious one, but it, I think it, it, it deserves to be said. I mean, Jake is mentioning it in the chat. Pulling <laughs> up is, is Simon Tarada. And, yeah. and I mean, um, yeah. If, if you're if you're trying to score goals and bounce back up and, and get promoted, there's basically no one better. Um, and yeah, I mean, very much uh, as advertised so far. Was you have three goals and an assist already, something like that. Something like that, yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, just I mean, always seems to have great awareness, not only of. of you know, his relationship to the goal, where, where his teammates are um, pretty consistently seems to make like the, the best decision um, for like the goal scoring opportunity, which isn't always the shot, maybe more than somebody like, you know, Bolter is doing at the moment, in my yep. opinion, yep. Um, who, who I feel like is, is more just kind of like taking, taking the extra dribble, like taking the extra shot sometimes. Not that he's not, you know, making good plays as well, but yep. um, yeah, Tarada just like very polished, very confident immediately looks every bit what we thought he was going to be in. Yeah. As long as he could stay healthy. Um, I'm, we I'm we talked about the first game, how he looks so much better than everybody else. He looks like a legit, yeah. like beast. Uh, and what you were hoping for is it's shocking that this guy doesn't, has never did well. Last season, honestly. I mean, yes, it's, yes, it's true. This is very true. Um, and so, yeah, now he's been uh, f- living up to the billing so far. I feel uh, like Ramp was a guy that a lot of people were excited about. Yeah, um, yeah, he's, he's done well. Bring, um, some of his like, you know, his dribbling and his progressive runs and stuff. I don't know. I, I mean, your progressive passing. I mean, maybe I, I, I've got what I, some of the stats. I think people were highlighting at various times. I don't know. Uh, but so, uh, Drexler's a name. I think a lot of us know. Um, Salazar. People are getting excited. What, what's Salazar's deal? Is he so? Who's he owned? Is he is, is, is Eintracht? Like, Eintracht Frankfurt. And Frankfurt's doing like a Chelsea thing with him, where he's just like on the books like forever. Yes. And he's just, like, Never actually plays. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I think there's an option though. We have an option to buy potentially if we get promoted. We we'll get if we have money. Um, I believe yeah, St. Paul last season what six goals, six assists. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that was a move kind of later into the uh, the transfer activity that we've had that people were, um, you know, promising about. Um, oh, well, John's gotten a lot of minutes so far. Yep. Yes, um, so yeah, I mean, who are the guys that stuck out for you? Um, you know, for me, I, you know, obviously it's Toronto is obviously the no brainer. Danny Latza, I thought has played, you know, fairly well so far. Uh, Marius Bulter, when, when he came in, I was like, what are you doing? This doesn't make sense. Cause him and Toronto are similar players. I didn't think they would work well together, especially when the, you started hearing that they may start together. I'm like, how's this going to work? But you know, what you said was Toronto is looking as like the playmaker and goal scorer. He's not only, he looks for the best option period. And sometimes that's Bolter or, you know, other guys are finding Bolter and Bolter hasn't put away his opportunities. He had a, he had a goal, I think. He's had a couple goals already this year. Um, and he, I think he's fitting very nicely with Toronto up top. And now you got Salazar in the mix. That's another player I'm very happy to see. Um, I wasn't sure what he, I mean, we watched the highlight reels. We watched what they did last year in the Bundesliga. Um, but, you know, his first game, scoring his debut. I, got, I think goal and assist in his debut. Uh, he's he's looked good so far. And if we can have a proper 10, I know people want, are thinking of the fact that maybe we can have Harit and Salazar. I don't see financially how that could work. Um, but, uh, you know, who knows? We'll see. I mean, we're playing thus far, I guess, right? But, I mean, um, those two have been interesting for me. I think the fact that uh, – I don't know if – I forget who it is been starting and defense instead of Tiao. Um, I'm surprised we still have uh, – you know, speaking of guys we haven't got rid of yet, Nastasic is still on the lineup, uh, on the squad. Um, but, anyway, I digress. Um, those have been the main ones for me and, and Ranfield for me as well as playing, did, playing really did, well. Did Sausage not move yet? I thought he just moved to Italy. Or maybe that was a rumor I was saying. I, maybe that Who's was that? Actually. Sausage? I heard, I heard a rumor. I just heard rumors. I mean, it could have happened, but I... I'll have to, I'll have to check that one. Yeah, go ahead. Keep, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. No. And then uh, the one for me, um, uh, Yaroslav Mikhailov from Zenit. I wasn't sure. Like It was a, it was like a tryout from Zenit because uh, we played them, and I guess they liked what, he saw, what they saw. Um, but he's he's done well for the minimum time that he's had, and so Schalke's like, all right, we'll give you a loan and we'll try you out and see how it's done. And I think he's uh, 
you know, if he, you know, listens to the players around him, watch and works hard, he could he could maybe become a player. Who knows? Um, it's still too early to tell, but uh, yeah, uh, I think um, it's been it's a it's a good cheap pickup. We haven't really spent much money. Now the one the one big argument we we heard during the summer, obviously the Toroda news was fantastic, right? But the amount of money that they're talking about, how much they're paying him now, it was, it was a free transfer, but they had to pay him, you know, so much per year. And everyone was like, whoa, 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 we don't have any money. We're in this fight to Liga. Why are you paying? I forget the amount, but it was a lot of money. And everyone was like, well, what are we doing? Um, I think if, if he provides the goals that he is capable of and so far is showing he can, if he gives us a 20-goal season, uh, I think it's worth it, right? Now, if we don't get promoted, it obviously is going to come back to bite us. But I, I think, you know, when you have a chance to get a player like that, especially when you're just struggling for goals and he's obviously a guy who can make it happen, you got to give it to him, right? I mean, are you, what are your thoughts on all this with with the the contracts with him? And that's that's the main move, not the only one, but that's the main move that to me is yeah. like when we're saying this is not like a like a full rebuild. Mm-hmm. That's one of the ones that kind of points to that because yeah. that's still potentially Schalke doing so like from a financial standpoint that maybe doesn't make the most sense and maybe doesn't fit with um, sort of like the thought process behind a lot of the other moves that they've been making. Yeah. But it's literally just because they're 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 still holding on to you know the partial belief that. You know, give it give it a few games into the season to kind of like figure things out and get the squad playing together, and then you know make a run and actually try to bounce back up right away. And you know, it's worth going out and getting you know the talisman up top who can hopefully have that 15, 20 goal season for you and, and solve um, what's been a a problem in that position for Schalke for seasons now um, in in the top division as well. Um, and once again, basically since you know Huntelaar had been at his at his peak, we we've been struggling to find any consistency up there. So. Yeah, no, no, that's certainly sad, but true. Uh, and if, for those who are listening in the chat uh, or anywhere on social media right now, uh, you know, tell us what you think of the transfer market so far. What do you, what do you, what do you think of the transfers outs and the transfers in? Uh, let us know in the in the comments. And if you're listening to this on the podcast later on, just uh, send us a tweet at Shalk America. Let us know what your thoughts are on that. Uh, lots of moves to do, but uh, you know the season did kick off. Obviously, the big game that, that started it all off was uh, the game against Hamburg. Big game, right? I, I, Two big former uh, um, Bundesliga clubs, almost said Serie A there, uh, former Bundesliga clubs going at it. And uh, we weren't sure. We were, this was really going to see Hamburg's been the, the seasoned veteran in, in the Schweizer Liga all of a sudden. And uh, we wanted to see how we would stack up against them. Uh, preseason, we had some uh, decent results against, uh, you know, I think it was Zenit and I forget who the other club was, Shakhtar, where we didn't give up any goals. We didn't score any, but we didn't give up any, right? And they're friendly, so you can take that with a grain of salt. But uh, the Hamburg game, the real first test, Jack, uh didn't fare well that game did it um three one loss i think we scored an opening goal but then they came back with three goals uh successive goals that was actually the one that was the one of the three games that was actually aired on on espn plus yeah uh thoughts uh quick thoughts on, on that game against hamburg yeah so that's the only game i've seen of us actually so far just because we're still trying to figure out the shock of tv situation here and i've been super busy on the weekends and haven't had the time to like track down the streams as they're happening um, and obviously, we don't have the, the ability to watch them on demand at the moment. But uh, yeah, the Hamburg game, not not a unique sentiment, but uh, still just so weird seeing Schalke and Hamburg uh, contesting a game in the second yeah. divisions. Very, very strange uh, feeling. And once again, not the only kind of bigger team down there at the moment, too. It's a, it's a really interesting uh, mix of mix of clubs this year. But um, really bright start in that game. I felt like the first 10, 15 minutes, super high energy, flying into tackles, very anticipatory. Toroto um, goal. I mean, uh, right off the bat, yeah, that was I awesome. Mean, yeah, Toroto. I mean, it's creating creating chances from you know midfield turnovers and springing quickly. And, you know, and you know, so not as much possession, but trying to attack very quickly in transition. Um, and yeah, and Torada, I think it was uh, it was actually dis- it was called off like in, in the moment yes. the AR overturned it and because he was onside. But uh, yeah, Torada scoring right away, and you're just like hell yes like this is exactly like you know what we wanted inside this guy for um and then what i mean as as we typically do i think it was a you know a mixture of us backing off a little bit but also hamburg you know growing into the game to some extent um and uh they really dominated possession for much of the rest of the game yeah. uh, which i guess to some extent was to be expected they've kind of yeah. been a possession team but yeah. even so um you know I, I think they're not was, byron they're not byron so why are we acting exactly. like it? i think there was kind of the, the expectation among about a lot of shabba supporters like Okay, this is the way we played last year when we were historically <laughs> bad and, you know, like very much out outclassed. But now we're in the second division. And even though, you know, you and I, for example, have been saying this is not going to be a cakewalk and it's, it's not anywhere near a guarantee that we're going to get promoted right away. And I think what we're seeing ninth in the table currently after three games. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I think they I think they expected us to be on the front foot a little bit more and, and not have some of the same issues with game flow um, that we have 
um, from much of last year in the, I mean, the last couple of seasons to, to a large extent. Um, and so, yeah, I think it was very disappointing um, our inability to, to really build and connect passes, especially in the second half. Um, build, we're trying to build out of the back. Um, and so it was a lot of that same kind of like, you know, five, three, two long balls at times, you know, and that, that kind of stuff. And so it's, it's kind of frustrating to watch. I think, you know, it, hopefully, so, you know, uh, Ramos is coming in last season, inheriting a horrible situation, just trying to, you know, steer the ship to, 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 to port in the storm. Right. And just kind yeah. of like end the season. And they go, okay, now he's got a whole summer to work with the team and, and, and try to like, you know, affect a new style of play. And I think after the first game, a lot of people were like, like, okay, like, saw a couple of things in there, but, like, this isn't as much of a, a change as maybe we were perhaps expecting or would have wanted. So, yeah, um, yeah ultimately, not 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 the not the opening you would have liked there. Um, I mean, what did you make of it? Yeah, no, no, I, I thought the same thing. I mean, I knew it was never going to be easy against Hamburg, but, uh, yeah, you know, scoring so early gave us a lot of hope and then, you know, giving up those three goals, giving up a lot of possession. And I think I think you're right, the, the, the manner we did it, uh, giving up all that possession like they were a, a top Bundesliga club was uh, not the way you want to start. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, we saw all the naysayers come out there uh, after the game, like, hey, here we go again. We're going to we're going to the, the third league. It's like, all right, cal- calm down. It's it's Hamburg. You know, if we if we did it like five games in a row, okay, I get you. But um, yeah, it, it wasn't the, the most. It wasn't the best way to start. Um, I, I'm sure the, the ratings were probably decent because it's two you know the two clubs uh, historical names. Uh, but yeah, it wasn't a, it wasn't a most ideal thing. And then look, the next game we had to go against Holsten Kiel. Holsten Kiel was a surprise darlings of last year, nearly making it to the Bundesliga. Uh, and then we that game was a complete turnaround from the first game, right? We you know Toroda two goals, Bulter got a goal as well. You know three nothing win against Holsten Kiel. Um, nice win there. Uh, and you know we and, we and we talked about Bulter being a a good fit with Toroda uh, surprisingly. And when they went into the, our first DP Pokal matchup, we we. Many of us expected that we were going to win, but we weren't positive. You know, like, well, we saw one good game, one bad game so far. Uh, and it turned out really well, uh, the game. Um, Bulter scored. They, I, I know they scored right away soon after that, and Bulter scored again. Salazar got his first goal, and Mikhailov got a goal as well. Uh, and so things were looking up. Uh, and then we had a game against... I, Toronto, ahead. by the way. T- Toronto's just got, like, every finish in his bag. Every he does. finish that you he need. Is a, I mean, he like, is. And then they, both, both of his goals in that one were set-piece goals. But, like, yep. the first one was kind of, like, a half-volley, scissor-kick type thing. Um, second one was a nice... You know, I think that was kind of, like, in the air as well. Yep. And, you know, and not not as difficult, but still, you know, requires some some technical ability in the box. And, yeah, I just... I just I really enjoyed both of those two because I was just like, yes. Like, somebody that can just consistently get open... You know, it yeah, ha- has the run, has the physicality, has the finish, and it's just kind of like, where has this been? It's so refreshing to have an actual competent number nine, and then a backup and a competent backup with a bolter with it. With, he's he's putting in the back of the net now, and he's finding his he's finding those runs. I had a nice run, I think, in the Villingen game um, where he scored a goal, um, and maybe it was Eisberg. I forget, but uh, uh, yeah, now both those guys having two guys who can score goals. I mean, what they both have three goals now or something like that. Um, to start the season, it, it, it's nice to see. It's a very, I mean, they're already, they're already, you know, if you look at the numbers last year, the top goal score, what is, was it Hoppy, what's uh, six or something like that? So, you know, they're halfway there already. Uh, a couple games One in. One other thing from the first two games before we move on to the DFP people Cal and then the, uh, Al on Friday, but um, uh, wanted to pick your brain real quick on, uh, so the, the match at Hamburg, and then I also believe for, for Kiel, which I didn't, I hadn't watched that match, but yeah. uh, the Hamburg match, um, it was Florian Flick. Starting in the back three. Yeah, we saw that in, off, in preseason too. For some, I don't know why, and maybe I was just way off on this. I was expecting it to be more likely, like like Paulson was playing, yeah, in the center back role, and you'd see Flick in you know the base of midfield, which is what he was doing for the most part when we saw him making those initial breakthrough appearances late last season. I don't know if it's an issue of like they don't think that he has the coverage, or maybe like the physicality to play that role. I don't see how the answer then is necessarily to throw him into the back line. Um, yeah. yeah, I just I don't know. I, I felt that was. Because that's all you know. It, it's like a it's a big game. It's the first game of the season. It's Hamburg, so it's like a big club by Bundesliga two standards. Um, and to immediately throw him into like, yeah, he's working there in the preseason. But what I understood to be that somewhat of unfamiliar unfamiliar position for him, um, I feel like he kind of got exposed in that first match. Um, uh, personally. Yeah. Like, like, like you know, kind of slow, had a bunch of fouls, you know, gave away a penalty. Um, and, and I was I, I, I thought that was interesting, especially because as you mentioned earlier, Timo Becker, like. I was watching that game and I'm like, oh, maybe we just have like depth issues here. But then they sub Timo Becker on. I'm like, you could have put Timo Becker at like right center back that From the start. in the first place. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he's played that position to some extent and has an entire yeah. season of Bundesliga minutes last year. Yeah, that, that was certainly head scratching for me. And uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it either. 
Um, I'm with you. I thought Paulson would have played in defense and Flick would have been in the midfield, in the mid, a defensive midfielder role. We saw him do it at the end of the season. We all thought he looked very well. He played very pretty good. And um, to have the opposite happen to what most of us were thinking, uh, at least both of us, I should say, uh, it was, it was head scratching and, and it looked like he was exposed, as you said. Uh, he didn't look like he fit physicality wise. I think he didn't look natural um, in that position at all. As, as, as the opposite of what we saw at the end of last season, I thought he looked like a phenomenal tackle of the ball. Um, didn't have that pressure of you know holding out that back line. I think that's too much of pressure for a youngster to have. And uh, Malik Tiao is different. He's a center back by trade, uh, and he he played that very well. Becker as well. They they both did well together last season, um, for the most part. But uh, f- having Flick a- as a, a center back uh, has been head scratching to me, and it, it's continued for for the pretty much the first four games so far, including the DFB Pokal. And so it's um, I think it is one game he hadn't started, but. Yeah, it's uh, I don't know, and maybe Grimozzi sees something he he that we don't, or or Flick's telling him something else. I don't know, but uh, that's not the move that I would have particularly made. You know, with those two, and I know I think there were some questions about maybe having Flick and Latza in there at the same time. I mean, I don't know. Well, I don't know what the reason is. Flick too got hurt right away, and that that was yeah. you know quasi, potentially a quasi long long term injury. Yeah, um, not an ACL right, but still had some sort of other ligament tear right in his knee. Yeah, I believe that's what I heard too. So. Ah, uh, very, very unfortunate, uh, like I said. And, um, yeah, we had that big win in DP Pokal first round, uh, 4-1. Um, I thought it was a good good victory against a team we probably should have beaten. Um, and then, you know, you, you basically have two wins in a row, and, you know, we had a game going into against uh, Eisenberg. Al, um, not sure how that was going to go, but uh, we, again, scored early. Um, Dominic Drexler scored a goal, a uh, nice goal for him. And then uh, we did... We played well for the, probably the first 60 minutes, Jack, and then we kind of reverted to old Schalke where we thought we're good enough to hold the lead, and we're not. We're not there yet. Uh, one nothing lead with this kind of squad for the last couple of years is not good enough. They're not good enough to hold that lead, and um, people on, on Twitter were, were ripping them for uh, making that decision to sit back when they should have kept attacking. Obviously, Boulter had a, a glorious opportunity. Uh, I think it was late in the first half where he should have made it 2 nothing, but that was standing. They should have kept attacking, Jack, you know, this is not like I said. This is not a team that can hold the lead. He's got to keep trying to score goals, feed those dogs up top, and if you get a two goal lead, okay, I get it then. Maybe. Yeah. Not not saying it happened in the same way or for the same reasons, but some quasi similar arc to like the first game against Hamburg too. Get, getting the lead early and and then kind of seeding some of the ground that you have, yeah, um, and, and allowing the opponent to get on the front foot and then not not capitalizing it. Yeah, it sounded like we still had a number of chances that we could have um, scored on, uh, but probably yeah, probably one you would have liked to get. Um, at home, what it would have been nice to pick up that that second win, but uh, yeah, you know, at least uh, you saw Bolter playing the ball into Tirada, who then once again immediately knows where his teammate is, plays the smart ball, and it's a nice finish by Drexler, right? So, um, mm-hmm. what's get a bunch of new people involved in, and as you said, the Bolter uh, Tirada connection continues to look promising in that regard. Yeah, that's been very good, and I think Bolter has been you can, you can play the striker or left winger, it seems like he's very versatile, um, and what, what he can do so. Um, actually, I think the goal he had against uh, Vlingen, uh, he did the same thing where he like caught the ball at midfield and kind of like made the run and finally got the ball back, whatever. It was a really good goal, that one was. Uh, Jake says, with all the moving pieces in the player department, I really thought the game against Hamburg felt inconsistent and disjointed in our performance. And I can kind of see that. I mean, yeah, they had some time in the preseason, but it's the first game against a team who's been together for a while. It's only natural that there would be some uh, growing pains, um, but we thought uh, the game plan was not was not correct. I think um, it seemed like we were trying to adapt our play to what Hamburg was going to do. We, we figured, you know, we saw this last year with Gramozzi and several of the managers we had, where they try to mirror the other team. It's like we're not good enough to mirror the other team. Let's just play our best formation and 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 see what we can do. And uh, I think after, since that game, we've played a lot better in terms of. Um, how we've shaped our team and, and playing to our strengths and not necessarily uh, trying to stop the other team from you know their weakness or their, their strengths too. So um, it's been better. Uh, let's see how the the next game is going to be difficult. But uh, what, what are your thoughts so far through the first you know, three, four games, three games in the DFB Pokal? I mean, yeah, once once again, having obviously not seen all of the minutes uh, yet to form a full opinion, Um I mean, it's it's a decent start. You have to give the team time with all the new people coming in uh, yeah. to kind of to kind of gel. Um, although once again, you have had you know Kramatsis in place for a while now and, and with a full 
um, off season to work with a lot of these guys. So hopefully it's not gonna not gonna take too long. Yeah, it, it, it sounds like in for what I've seen, you know, the, the highlights I've seen, you know, the match footage I have seen, in some areas, you know, playing pretty well and, and like look, looking um, more coherent than we have a lot, a lot of times. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, still still a lot of work to be done. Um, you know, still a couple games of pretty worrying possession statistics. Um, and, uh, you know, once again, some, some, some of the same game flow issues we've had previously, um, and maybe it's not as much midfield bite as we, as we potentially need, despite all the signs we brought in, because some of them just seem to be maybe slightly more attacking focused, um, at times, but, um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, we'll see how it goes. Uh, it, it's not, it's not the worst string of results. Like I say it would have been nice to grab that, that, that other win on Friday yeah. instead of uh, losing that one, uh, late, 86 but, minute. <sighs> yeah. But, you know, th- three match days in, you have a win in the DFB Cow and you're, you know, top half of the table. Okay. Can be, yeah. Especially given what United said coming in once again, which which is that this is not a guarantee. But like, hey, we're going to be first or second at the table, like you know, pretty pretty convincingly. Um, yeah. It's not that that can't happen. It's just that I, th- I think it's much more likely that we're going to finish, you know, maybe sixth, seventh, eighth, somewhere in there. And, and, and if we do get it going, you know, it, it might be like, hey, we're in the playoff as opposed to, mm. um, you know, first or second place. It might be able, you know, but we're fighting for the right to. Uh, to get in there we'll see uh you know i've seen i've seen predictions for us kind of all over the table from you know from second or third all the way down to like you know 11th or 12th something like that so um i don't know how you feel about things but yeah i'm still kind of reasonably optimistic with what we've done so far and and i I think there's still a chance for this team to kind of gel and get going and and, and do some damage if you're reasonably optimistic i must be freaking uh reaching for the stars i i I see the team you know being in that it's gonna be tough the top five is going to be difficult, I think, but I think we can get in the third spot, the, the playoff spot. Um, it's going to be difficult. You know, I thought Holson Kiel would be, you know, be up there, and so far they started very poorly. Uh, but we've seen Jan Regensburg, who's been playing very well so far. So, I mean, anything can happen. It's fight the Liga. We've seen long season. It's a long season. It's a very long season. Uh, you mentioned attacking prowess, and uh, it kind of segues perfectly with Jake's comment. It says, uh, with Toroto and Bolter building a nice relationship already, do you see Hoppy being able to crack into the starting lineup, and uh, would a sale of him be better for both Schalke and Hoppy? Uh, let me go first on this one. So I, yeah. if, if this was a normal year where we were in the Bundesliga, uh, I would say, okay, maybe I, I can lean towards that. But, you know, we've seen the last several years how injury has been a big problem for us, and, and I think to keep the depth is important at this point. Yeah, you want Hoppy to you know get some pitch time, but you know what if one of the big horses goes down or Salazar goes down? You need to have somebody there. I think Hoppy could play that ten position. Um, and it's just behind those two big boys. Um, I I personally would love to see this, him stay and try to work into the lineup, learn from Taroda like we wanted him to learn from Huntelar last year. I think it'd be great for him uh, and his confidence too, learning what the what Bolter and, and Taroda can do and picking some of that up. And then when he gets his opportunities, you know, play well. He in preseason he was I don't even know if he played many much in preseason because he was mostly with the U.S. team. But I would like to see him. Uh, what are your thoughts on on Matthew Hoppy? Um. Yeah, I, I'm kind of conflicted on this one at the moment. So, first of all, I, I think it was very good, both from like a club perspective and a player perspective, that he was spending his summer uh, with the U.S. Men's National Team, able to compete in the Gold Cup. Uh, yeah. Ultimately, play a fairly significant role. It, it, you know, put in some good performances, raise his profile. Gold um, Cup as winners. Kind of, as he, yeah, I mean, as he's kind of in the shop window at the moment. So, I mean, yeah, Gold Cup maybe not the best level of competition you're going to face. But, you know, still, for him to, to, to kind of break onto the scene, have meaningful minutes and contributions and leave winning that um, only helps his value, right? I mean, because yeah. based on how things went last year, it's kind of hard for it to be high. Um, some of the rumors that we've been seeing are like Premier League team rumors with, you know, 8 yep. million to 12 million. Yep. You know, I'm Matt sure says I'm Everton. Surprised. Yeah, I've seen a couple yeah. teams. So here's the thing. I mean, first of all, if, it, if it's a Premier League team that's calling for him, I don't blame the kid for not wanting to play second division football for Schalke when like the Premier League's um available to him yeah. uh i wouldn't blame him in the slightest do i think that he's maybe ready at this point in his career good once again good summer performances i, I think him playing at this level for another season maybe two um would probably do him a lot of good the problem is we were kind of expecting like oh well he's gonna have plenty of opportunity to get those minutes seaman Torada, matthew yeah. happy's not taking seaman Torada's place no. to maybe no. bolter's place yeah. At times. Um, yeah. And like, yeah, could, could Matthew Happy be a super sub or you bring him in, you know, to give like, you know, Tarada, you know, bench for a little bit. So then Tarada makes a super sub appearance, keep him fresh. Yeah, absolutely. There's ways that you could rotate him in. And I think, you know, Hoppy could absolutely play, you know, a role for us. I, I just don't know if, if, if the way things are structured at the moment, 
he's slated to be playing a super significant role. And I think given our financial picture, if the offer's on the table for like eight plus million, you, you kind of have to take that. Um, I, I think it'll make the player probably happier than, I mean, I, we haven't talked to Matthew obviously, but, um, and, and I think it probably makes sense for the club, especially with, you know, the transfer market. I mean, it was a, it was a big transfer market, but it's kind of been depressed recently overall because of COVID. So if you're able to get that kind of money for him, and you, you might, might be able to help you make a couple other moves um, for a little bit less money than you otherwise might if you have to uh, to wait a little bit longer uh, to get that money available to you. So, yeah, like I said, I'm kind of conflicted. I'd love to have Hoppy on at some point if we can get him um, and, you know, and kind of talk to him. But, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, those rumors were kind of hot for a little bit, and I haven't heard a lot of them in the last, like, week and a half, two weeks or so. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, yeah, we'll see once he gets back with the team and is practicing hard. Maybe we'll see more of him and get more rumors again. But we'll see uh, how that how that ships up. And uh, yeah, next, you know, let's wrap this podcast up with uh, next game is against a team uh, not many predicted to be doing so well as they have been so far this season. Uh, uh, Jan Regensburg, three zero to start the season, eight goals for zero goals against so far. Um, it's gonna be a difficult game. They're they're what second now on the table currently. Uh, they're they're not a bad team um, overall. I think it's going to be a good challenge for us. I think they're actually top of the table maybe. Uh, but look at some of the results they had. They beat Holson Kiel like we did three um, nothing. They beat uh, Sandhausen three nothing. They beat uh, Darmstadt two nothing. So um, yeah, it, you know it's it's a team that doesn't give up any goals. Uh, we actually have some 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 horses on our team that could to put it away. So it's going to be interesting to see. You know their their strength against our strength. I guess is our strength. Um, this is the life that we've signed up for now, Richard. Stressing about possibly every game by a team called Jan Reagan. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is what we're doing now, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is. It is what we're gonna do. Uh, but uh, yeah, it should be a, an interesting game. Um, I know the big. So at least for this game, we need to, if we get the opportunity to score a goal early and and get the lead, we need to learn from our mistakes in, in the out in the owl matchup as well as the Hamburg and. Keep the keep the foot on the pedal and keep trying to score goals because uh, defensively we're not there yet where we can lock up shop and try to hold that kind of lead. Uh, just keep feeding the big boys and you know hopefully Bolter if he gets an opportunity again like he did last game that he has uh, he puts it away. I think that second goal would have done wonders for us last last game. But um, yeah, keep the keep the pressure on Jack because uh, this this team we're playing there they so far they're starting very well and so uh, you have to take him seriously I think. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and uh, listen, like, yeah, obviously we come in with, 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 with some, something of a pedigree and, and, you know, it's a big club in the second division, but we're not really, you know, we wouldn't be in the second division if we were a big club at the moment, you know what I mean, in terms of, like, how we're playing. So yeah, uh, yeah. yeah when it comes to, like, how do you think we're going to fare against Jan, right? I mean, like, we, we have everything to prove. Yes. Um, we're not really going into many games as, like, a, you know, a clear-cut favorite or, you know, with the expectation. We're still trying to feel out how, you know, what this team's going to look like this season, how this campaign is going to go. So, yeah. I don't remember if we talked about this or it's just something I heard maybe on telecast or something like that. But, you know, Schalke is a big name. And so we're going to get the best from all the clubs, especially the smaller clubs that, you know, have nothing to lose. They're going to live up for all these games. So this is basically like playing like the champion, quote unquote, because you're playing a big name and come to your stadium. Fans are going to come out for that. Uh, and so you're going to get the best from everybody. And, you know, I know Matt says Regensburg usually just starts strong, and but they're a mid-table team. But, you know, it will they will be tough for us no matter what. Uh so yeah, you know this is is this the life we get we are signed up for, uh, week in week out of stressing because every team is going to bring it and uh, we really have to perform and earn our way back into the Bundesliga uh, if it's in the cards for us this year. Jack, um, do you feel do you feel good about the matchup coming up here against Regensburg? Yeah, we'll see. Once again, it, it, I have to I have to get Schalke TV so I can actually watch these and then, and then like, you know I can tell you how how good I'm feeling about things more specifically. Than <laughs> in minutes, but. Um, like I said, from from what I have seen, like it re- reasonably competent. There, there, there's there's things that people are concerned about right now, obviously, um, but it, it doesn't look you know completely dour in like, all aspects of, of how we're no. playing at the moment. Not so, as much as we're seen on Twitter yeah. <laughs> from both uh, English and German fans. So, yeah. so I mean, yeah, yeah, it's 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 early days. Um, it you is. Know, and you you and I have never been the uh, the sky is falling on match day one going to get relegated no. people, and and no. they are out there. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, we're not um let's before i I was going to wrap up on that but let's you know let's talk about the elephant in the room at least for the for those of us on this side of the of the of the pond and that's uh viewing of schalke it's been mighty difficult for everyone here in canada and the usa 
you know, obviously last year we had ESPN because we were in the Bundesliga, but this year uh, Zweite Liga isn't shown as much on ESPN+. Plus. They only have the game of the week. We were fortunate that we had Hamburg in the first game, so we got to play in that game, but it's not often we're going to be uh, televised in terms of national television. So our main options are really, you know, Schalke TV, and really, you have to, you know, for those of us on this side of the pond, you're going to have to reach out to customer service from everything I've read, and they'll have to send you a link. You can't sign up the traditional way like you would on the website because of the whole, you know, if you're in Germany, it's accessible to you. But for us, it's, it's a little bit more difficult, Jack. Um, and then you have other ways, you know, I, I know our friend Dirk, who usually joins us on the show, he talked about, you know, possibly maybe doing it not the most legal way. And, uh, you know, there's also VPNs you can use and this and that. Jack, uh, that's going to be our struggle until we find something. I think it's going to be uh, difficult for all of us, right? At least on this side of the, of the pond. Yeah, and I don't want to complain about it too much. Just because, no, I mean, no. we, we really are spoiled for choice as American yes. um, footballing fans. I mean, the access that we have to various leagues around the world is, amazing. you know, beyond what a lot of the people, you know, across the pond had access to, to some extent. I mean, I think just, I mean, people would be jealous of, of all the different games that, that we have. And we were lucky, you know, for, for the, the pretty reasonable fee that ESPN Plus is to be able to watch it last year. Yeah. Um, yeah, it just, they have the rights to it, from what we understand. I don't know how, I mean, maybe there's there's costs associated with making them available, you know, on demand that I'm not aware of. I don't know how these all these things work. But, okay. I mean, because ESPN has the rights to it, you would hope that they would just make, I mean, not even, not even have to live stream them. Don't even have to have commentary yeah. or whatever, but just like put the games up so we can watch them. That would be great. Yeah. Um, but like I said, yeah, we're, we're in the process of trying to get Shaka TV figured out and hopefully we can uh, be back up and running with that. Uh, but yeah, you know, hey, that's part of the risk you run. Um, when, you, when, you, when you get relegated, obviously people aren't going to be, uh, you know, broadcasting some of the lower divisions to the extent that they are uh, the top ones. So that's uh, that's on the team, obviously, for for falling there. And we get it. We, yeah. But, you know, we're going to we're going to go along for the ride, obviously. Some alternate options for those uh, who want to at least listen to it, if nothing else. Uh, you can also use in TuneIn. TuneIn is a great app, great radio app that you can listen to the to, to streams all around the world. So I've listened to many, many German games that way. And then also you go to Schalke's website, uh, give them a plug, right? And uh, you can actually listen to the game for free there as well. It's in, it's in German, but at least you get to hear the game live. Uh, and so that's better than nothing, I think, right, Jack? So uh, we'll we'll keep working to see what we can we can find out, at least from our end uh, in terms of Schalke viewing. Uh, but uh, it's it's going to be a little hard for us, for all of us, I think, on this side. So you know we'll do what we can. But uh, if nothing else, uh, we can at least hear the streams uh, for free. So um, there's that. So what we can do, we got to do, right? Plug away and. Keep trying to bring you uh, content for you guys somehow, some way. <laughs> uh, speaking of content, um, we just released a video. Our, we just started this series for the uh, the history of Schalke. We episode one just released. It was actually about the origins, 1904 to 1920. Short videos, but you know, it's trying to get everybody up to snuff about what the history is of Schalke. So if for those who English fans who you know want to learn more about Schalke, we'll, we'll try to provide decade by decade. Uh, it'll be a while, and then it'll end, obviously, with the 2017 start of uh, Jack and Richard. And the I'm going to host a later segment called the Catucci years. <laughs> <laughs> and you even go. have uh, the DeSanto years that I'll host as well. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah so, we'll see. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, let's put a bow on this one. Um, if you haven't signed up for the Shaka US newsletter yet, uh, make sure you sign up for that. Uh, not only do you get uh, info on the club, but you get the latest on all the fan clubs across uh, North America when we can eventually go out and do our our um, uh, viewing parties. Uh, you know, I know Jack and I are both uh, you know itching to go out there and try to do some interact with the fans. Uh, we got some nice giveaways we want to do in person as well. So, um, oh, by the way, we had a big giveaway. Uh, not too long ago, and uh, you know, we had lots of winners. Uh, we posted all the winners here uh, on, on Twitter over the summer, so uh, congratulations to all the winners. Hope you enjoy all the gear that you got. Uh, Doug says, uh, Thanks, guys. Good to be back with the Royal Blues and you all. Thank you, Jack, and good to be back. Jack, thank you, Doug. Good to be back with you too, and you too, Jack. You're welcome. <laughs> Keep tuning in each week as we try to bring you the latest from the Royal Blues. Uh, we'd like to thank uh, Shock for providing tidbits on our podcast tonight. Uh, any topics you would like us to discuss, just let us know at Chalk America on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you wherever you can find us. We'll we'll gladly hear you, right, Jack? Yeah. Where where yeah. can our uh, where can our lovely followers find you on social media? You can find me on Twitter at JM Mangan, J M M A N G A N. How do you like that? I like them. Cold, apples. haven't done it in months. Right off the tongue, no mistakes. Pressure's on, bud. What do you got? 
Uh, well, as always, you can follow me at r underscore k h a r m a n. Uh, make sure you follow us on our, on our YouTube page as well. I got some content like we're trying we to put out. Left. Like we never left. It's like we never left, right? And of course, you can follow us all our social medias. Follow us on uh, anywhere you can streams music, Apple Podcasts, um, you name it, we're there. So uh, yeah, until the next podcast comes, uh, we'll be with you soon, whether it's on the airwaves or on the video. Blue Golf. Sure.